In this video, we drive back up to Virginia to meet Jack's sister at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. She wanted to check out the Food and Wine Festival, which we had already been to, but when she suggested we go with her, we quickly agreed so that we'd have a chance to hang out with her, but also because we had such a good time the first time. On this trip, we added on a special backstage tour by purchasing tickets to their Clyde's and Collie's Animal Encounter. We got to go behind the scenes at Highland Stables to spend time up close with the Clydesdale horses and Border Collies. This backstage animal encounter cost $30 per person. When we went this weekend, they were only allowing one party at a time on each encounter. So since our party was the two of us and my sister, there were only three of us on this backstage tour. Outside of COVID, you might be combined with other guests for the experience. And that policy of combining groups may be coming back sooner than we think. The day after we visited, Bush Gardens announced they were ending their mask mandate for all guests who had received the COVID vaccine, and that they would not be asking guests whether or not they had been vaccinated. So things are changing at the theme parks these days. This animal encounter lasted about 40 minutes, and we had a great time. First up was the Clydesdales, a Scottish breed of workhorse made famous through being featured in the advertising of Anheuser-Busch promoting their Budweiser beer since the repeal of Prohibition. We learned that many Clydesdales were taken from their farm work and used in the war effort during World War I, but their numbers dwindled in the years that followed the war as farms became more mechanized. Clydesdales were originally featured at Busch Gardens when it was owned by Anheuser-Busch, but the park has since been sold to SeaWorld. The Clydesdales that live there now don't meet the qualifications to be Budweiser Clydesdales because all Budweiser Clydesdales must be reddish brown with a black mane and tail and four white stocking feet and a splash of white on their face. The horse we met named Axel wouldn't qualify as he had one black foot and a white spot on his belly, both of which would disqualify him. They ran through some simple hand motions that they trained the horses with to get them to perform certain movements or facial expressions. The trainers shared that the training methods they use with the animals at this and at all other SeaWorld parks only use positive reinforcement. We saw this at another SeaWorld owned park in Florida last year, Discovery Cove, where a sloth that we were getting to see up close wasn't very interested in performing. We will link to our Discovery Co. video above so you can see footage of that. It is actually our most watched video so far, but hey, who's counting? They showed us the horse's feet and explained how horseshoes are nailed into a horse's feet. We learned that the area of the hooves where the shoes are nailed have no feeling. They're made of a similar substance as human fingernails, but much thicker. She also talked about how horses are measured by hands. Axel was 18 hands tall and still growing. There's plenty of time for us to ask questions of the trainers and get our pictures taken with the horse. Next, we got to hang out with a border collie named Skye. The name of this breed comes from its likely origin along the border of England and Scotland. The origin of the word collie is not definitively known. Some believe it is from the Gaelic word for useful, while others say it's from the Old English word for worker. They have traditionally been used to herd sheep, though the Bush Gardens website explains that they will sometimes attempt to herd anything that moves, including cars, people, squirrels, and cats. From personal experience, I can say herding cats doesn't usually go well. The trainers mentioned that Border Collies are believed to be among the most intelligent of the dog breeds. While they can make good pets, the trainers suggested only getting one if you have plenty of time to spend with them, as Border Collies require much more physical exercise and mental enrichment than most other dog breeds. While she was paying attention to us and working to get treats, Skye also kept getting distracted whenever she would see people on the other side of the fence watching us. We played fetch with her, though when she would bring the ball back, she didn't want to let go of it until finally coaxed to do so with treats. She was a sweet dog. As a special unadvertised add-on, we got to have an up-close experience with another animal. They told us we could choose between meeting the black-faced sheep or the Scottish Highland cattle. We chose sheep and then spent a while interacting with three sheep named Cora, Lily, and Maisie, who were all related by the same dad. There was a fourth sheep from this flock that we saw in the stables on previous trips named Mac, but unfortunately he passed away earlier this year. 
Black face sheep originated as mountain sheep in Scotland. These sheep have black faces that usually have a number of white markings. Their legs are also usually black with white markings, and both male and females have horns. We got to feed the three sisters through the fence, and they let one of them, Maisie, come out to visit with us on our side of the fence. They were all excitedly eating right out of our hands. But when we fed all three of them together, we had to keep our hands on our side of the fence so that they would have to stick their heads through the fence boards because otherwise they would fight over the food and possibly injure each other with their horns. The trainers did say they were working to adopt a couple of male sheep, so they will hopefully join this flock soon. Even though we chose to see the sheep, we still walked over to the nearby pen where the Scottish Highland cattle were kept. One was resting and the other got up for a drink and a snack and even ended up stepping into their water bucket to cool their feet. While we knew from the website that there were Scottish Highland cattle in the park, we had never seen them before. I suppose we just didn't know where to look. But these cattle, famous for their long-haired coats, were fun to watch for a bit. The Clydes and Collies tour was $30 per person, in addition to the price of a regular park ticket. However, if you love animals, this is a great chance to get close to them and learn about them from the trainers who come to work with them every day, even during the pandemic when the park was closed. We had a good time petting, feeding, and taking selfies with these animals. There is another animal experience you can participate in for an extra fee involving the park's wolves. We plan to do that one as well later this year. They advertise that you'll learn about the wolves, how they're cared for, and will participate in a feeding. Though that tour notes that you'll not be allowed to touch the wolves during that experience. I'm thinking we wouldn't want it any other way. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. And we'll see you the next time we're traveling through.